Dear calculus students, I need you guys to pay attention to these four derivative questions. They all involve ln and also tangent. Let's take a look at these two first. y equals ln of tangent to the third power x. And the second one is y equals ln of tangent with a negative 1 like this and then x. Let's do this one right here first. Notice this right here means we will just have ln of tangent of x and then raised to the third power. Right? That's what this notation means. So here we see that this is instead of a natural law. By the law property, we can take the power and then put that in the front. Don't minus one though. This right here is just the log property. So this is not the power rule for the derivative. Okay? So this right here is just 3 times ln of tangent of x. So as you can see, y is actually the same as this. And then we can do the derivative based on looking at this right here. So here we have y prime. This is going to be a constant multiple. The constant will stay. And then when we do the derivative of ln, we do 1 over whatever this is right here. It's just the inside, which is tangent of x but we are not done yet because we will have to use the chain rule the derivative of tangent x is secant square x all right so that's pretty much it huh but in fact we can simplify this a little bit here's the deal this is still 3 and then 1 over tangent it's the same as cotangent which is just cosine of x over sine x and then secant is 1 over cosine, and here we have square, so this right here is just 1 over cosine square x. And as you can see, this and that cancel, and in fact, all in all, we will just get 3 all the way in the front, and then 1 over sine is cosecant, so cscx, like that, cosecant. And for this one, 1 over cosine is secant of x. So this right here will be the answer for that. Now, for the second one right here, it looks like earlier we could have just bring the street to the front, right? Save one step. But here we have a negative one. What does this mean? Can we bring the negative one to the front? No, we cannot. This is the problem, right? <laughs> because this right here means the inverse tangent of x. And I know this negative one is not power, it's just a notation, and a lot of people don't like this. So another thing that people will do is they will rewrite this as the following. So they will write this as ln, and instead of writing down the 10 with a negative one notation, they will put arc tangent, and then the input is x, like this, all right? So one way or the other, you just have to keep in mind this is the inverse tangent function. And of course, we also have to remember that if we differentiate inverse tangent of x, this gives us 1 over 1 plus x squared. All right? So it's very different than differentiating the regular tangent. So keep this in mind. And now let's actually do the derivative. Here we go. y prime. I'm going to use this notation because this is the main notation that we will be using throughout the class. So yeah. Okay, differentiating ln of this, so we get 1 over whatever this is. I'll put that down right here, which is inverse tangent of x. And then we use the chain rule. The derivative of this, as I told you guys over there, and that's what you should remember as well. We get 1 over 1 plus x squared. And because it has two terms, let me just put on parentheses to emphasize. And that's pretty much it. So on all, we just have 1 on the top over this times that, and usually we like to have the polynomial part, the polynomial part in front of any name function like you know tangent, inverse, or like sine, whatever. So let's write this down first. Parentheses, 1 plus x squared, and then times inverse tangent of x. And if you would like, 
if you really don't like this notation, you can write it as arc tangent. Yeah, so one way or the other. All right, let's take a look at these two questions. The first one is the. Okay, let's take a look at number three. We are going to differentiate why it's equal to inverse tangent of ln x. And for number four, we are going to differentiate why it's equal to inverse tangent of x times ln x. For this one, we will have to use the product rule because this is the product of two functions. But for this, we just need to use the chain rule because the natural log of x here is inside of the inverse tangent. Here we go, y prime is equal to, when we differentiate inverse tangent, we will get one over one plus, well, it's like a box, right? Whatever inside goes into the box, but we put on parentheses and then we put the ln x inside and then square, yeah? So it's like this, but again, you will have a box because the inside is ln x and so put here. And then we use the chain rule. We multiply by the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. So that's what we have. And I don't think there's anything that we can simplify, but we do have to notice that though, this and that has two terms from the first fraction. So there is technically a parenthesis like this, and usually we like to have the x goes first. So I will write this as 1 on the top over x all the way here times 1 plus this right here is just parentheses ln x square like that. And if you want to distribute the x, that's okay too. But usually we like to have the denominator being factored in. All right, take a look at this one. We have to use the product rule. So here we go, y prime. This is the first function, we keep it inverse tangent of x, and then we multiply by the derivative of the second. The derivative of ln x is 1 over x. And then we add the second function, which is just ln x. And then we multiply by the derivative of the first, which is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Good. And then I'm just going to put this on the top, like what's this on the top. And if you want to combine the fractions, then we can do the following. Here, we multiply by 1 plus x squared so that they will have the same denominator. And then we will just multiply this by that x. Right? So they will have the same denominator. And then the denominator is this, which is x times 1 plus x squared. And again, usually we like to have the denominator being factored in. And then we will try to distribute the top so that we can see if there's anything that we can combine and then we might be able to factor from there and then cancel. So that's why I distribute the top, not the bottom. All right, inverse tangent of x times one is just inverse tangent of x. Inverse tangent of x times x squared, we put the x squared in the front first. And then we have the inverse tangent. And lastly, we add ln x times x, but we'll put this x in the front. And you see that there's nothing that we can combine, so that will be it. And I'm just going to box this for the final answer, right? Check out my playlist over there. I have a lot more derivative questions for you guys.